there's a lot of conversation now here in Minneapolis and actually across the country and around the world about creating new food systems. There have been food systems in place. Unfortunately, they have been unfair and inequitable and that not everybody has been part of the uh, creation of and certainly have unfortunately been left out of the will. Let's talk history. At the turn of the century, there were those in power who really started to really divert our attention. We've seen over the last hundred years the demise of the family farm. That was all intentional and designed by brokers who wanted to monopolize and control our food source. Those who control the food, control the narrative, control the lives of people downstream of those economic capital revenue streams. Education. We've seen hundreds of years of money being deployed to rural communities that created rural businesses, that created subsidies and training programs for that population. Yet it was deployed over the heads of all people within urban communities. And so hundreds of thousands of, of millions of dollars have been deployed over the last 150 years through the education system, through the university extension system, through the ag system in terms of creating subsidies for corporate food production, to the demise of the local farmers, to the demise of urban residents. Even to this day, there's millions of dollars that's going for the farm to school initiatives. The same kids that are eating that food, which are by and large across huge urban cities, are people of color, they ought to be growing that food and ought to be receiving remuneration for their efforts. If you grow the food, you know the food. You know what they say, uh, give a man a fish and he eats for the day, teach a man a fish and he eats for a lifetime. And so that's really clearly for us the, the course of action, the strategy that we are doing. We're trying to create pipelines to higher education. We have to make sure that we are teaching families how to fish and not just simply approaching it from a Band-Aid approach and giving them a fish because that only helps reinforce, you know, this kind of indentured servitude, you know, this caste system that is sometimes, inter when it's intergenerational, it's pretty hard to escape. A lot of the work of, of activists like myself and others has really been to, to raise the bar, to pose the questions, to see how can we go about creating an equitable food system that gives all Americans have access to food sovereignty. Food sovereignty, is it a right or is it a privilege? Are you an abolitionist or are you not? And if you are an abolitionist, what can we do individually, but more importantly, what can we do collectively to bring about reform in a system? So we're trying to create a food system as a roadmap to prosperity. North Minneapolis is going green. Give us a call and learn what we mean. Where once lie urban blight, now sits luscious garden sites. Gardens without borders, classrooms without walls, architects of our own destinies, access to food, justice for all. So food is, is a unifier. Food and is as old as man himself. And so it really seems to me to be a, a strategy, a way that we can really find equality. And so I don't, even though Project Sweetie Pie were a training program for youth in horticulture, uh, uh, agriculture, and food systems, I really see our work as really being, we have been a public awareness campaign, really where, uh, growing the understanding of folks on the city level, on the state level, on the, on the county level and really getting them and challenging them. People ask me, am I, am I an educator? I say, no, I'm a food agitator because we cannot continue to embrace policies that have really been biased and very short-sighted and that have relegated people to generational poverty. And I think the food is a, way, a, way, a pathway out of that dilemma and that dynamic.
how can we empower neighborhood residents communities that have been outside of the American dream, how can we provide access to land, access to capital, access to infrastructure that will take their food ideas, their culturally specific foods that they and their families have been eating for generations, and how can we use that as a stimulus plan to really germinate and generate economic development, community development in low-income communities. And that is the work that I try to do with Project Sweetie Pie.